Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome to our port made workshop on safe and resource efficient small ports. And I'm Minna Keinen Toivola, and I'm the project leader for this project. So you are more than welcome to Rauma. And uh, I will give the floor quite soon to the others with the themes on safety and resource efficiency of the small ports. But I will take you for a moment back to the summer 2017. So let's start with a small video. So those were some summer moments from Rauma and our small ports. So I'm not giving too many statistics on our project, but you saw who are the partners in our project. So Samk is leading, we have city of Rauma. And then we have uh, Sotunga, Komun, Chökar Haas Pavilion from Åland and uh, municipalities of Söderham and Gävle from Sweden. And the project has been running now a bit less than one year. And we are uh, having the project still going on for two more years. And we are doing a quite some investments also here that you will hear later. But we will start with the theme on, on the safety. And, uh, Heikki Koivisto, sea captain and communication manager of the port mate will continue from here. Thank you. As you saw the, the film, which is done by most 90% of this drone. So it's, it's like this very nice equipment. And now there's evidence that the summer 2017 was very sunny in Finland. <laughs> so yeah, we, we really had to fight to find those days to get the, get, get the filming done. But okay, the topic here is uh, the safety of the, the small ports. Uh, there will be three speakers. 
So, Mr. Trophy Salahapa Devo Heikkinen with me. We had the um, workshop already one in, in Jevele in uh, February the 15th. The photo is from there. We had the uh, lot of uh, boarding Swedish people and uh, we made the uh, groups and uh, every group had the task and then then we went through the uh, tasks and we got very nice material for them for both for the safety and for the resource efficiency and today we are here in Rauma uh, having a bit different workshop and uh, we hope that we will get the lively conversation during the workshop and after the workshop and uh, the team co continues these workshops so that uh, we will have in uh, in Helsinki in the boat show we will have a workshop and then in Mariham and the last one will be at the Stockholm boat show we made the questionnaire and now we'll ask Mr. Temu Heikkinen to to open up a little bit what what were our findings from this questionnaire so Temu please Thank you, Heiki. Yes, we uh, so we had this questionnaire about safety issues, uh, kind of two questionnaires to be exact, one for the borders and another one for the for the port operators. So as a background, uh, it was carried out during last spring, during uh, March. Uh, so there was really on questionnaires a bit almost similar, but a bit different with a bit different questions and a bit different angle of uh, kind of asking the importance of certain safety issues from the uh, public and voters and uh, and then asking from small port operators that how these issues and a bit more actually also were are actually in their in their opinion have been kind of implemented in their ports. And uh, this uh, was marketed through social media and emails, basically only. And we had uh, uh, 309 responses, this borders questionnaire and uh, 56 for port operators questionnaire. And there was a raffle involved that uh, among the responses that they w uh, one of them won this uh, inflatable life vest. And here's the kind of multiple choice type of uh, results for the general public or boaters questionnaire. Here you can see the, they was divided to two parts. There was like a arrival and departure department and then staying at the port uh, to two kind of uh, parts. And uh, here you can see the questions basically. And we were asking the importance, how, how they see the importance of these listed issues. And they are ranked in the order of importance in this list. So uh, basically you can see here that uh, the say three most important things were clearly the, that the waterway to the port is clearly marked. So there's enough boyot, etc. The port is sheltered from the waves and there's uh, information available, preferably uh, beforehand about the entrance to the port. And there's also rest you can see. And then what comes to the more uh, to the staying at the port, then the the moorings are the most important that the boaters can really rely that the the boat or the the docks and piers stay in place and the cables are in okay, so they are like in good condition. And other things were that uh, this sheltering that they that the the port really is sheltered from the waves and wind also. If you have any questions, just go ahead and ask during the presentation then. And another questionnaire, which was for the operators. Here's a bit more questions. Uh, and they, from there, we asked that uh, kind of self-assessment of the report that how how they see that these issues are covered in the report. And so these readings are really like, I think like I said, it's average. And in this questionnaire also, this uh, zero is taken into 
into account than the previous. It wasn't because it was like, I don't know. But here it's missing like a, that we don't have this kind of service at all. So bit more or less the same things kind of raise up here that uh, that the port is sheltered from the waves and wind. That they, that it's that it's quite well covered in the ports. Uh, and that there's enough space for maneuvering, for example. Uh, what else? Basically, you can see the what what, what was asked from them from the from the operators here. And then then there was additionally to the addition to kind of uh, textual feedback about risks or improvements, the borders, this is for the borders basically, that they might have kind of highlights from that questionnaire. That what they see is important. They, they are not in any specific order because they are just textual pickings from the, from the uh, responses. But uh, generally the electrical safety is one thing that concerns people, that there seems to be that lots of cables going and coming and Maybe not enough sockets to plug the boats and and the boaters own cables might not be that uh, good condition, etc. And there are lots of different ways to use the kind of cabling. They might go through the water or something. And some some people are like uh, more careful with the cabling, etc. Then the fire safety. Uh, that was also one concern. That everything related to that basically that that there is enough uh, kind of uh, equipment for manual extinguishing. Some that somebody was asking for that that should be kind of emergency plan in the in the uh, port. And then also kind of related that the, in the fireplaces they might be in the area that they are. They also have the fire safety covered. So generally, then the traffic in the harbor that there is basically enough space to maneuver and there like there's lots of different boats coming and going and the speed might be varying etc depth information something that people value especially suppose when you have a uh, the boat that requires a bit more depth than normally and then the one one kind of specific thing uh, was that was written there was these ladders that um, that there's enough there's ladders that you can get out from the from the dock pool kind of if you drop because the piers are can be high and you can come out without a ladder so just the basic ladders to to be able to get out of the water if you drop there uh, and some something else then generally. Generally, you could see that quite many were worried about this. It says general seamanship that that they are they are clearly more these unexperienced boaters there, and and maybe people people are not that um, paying that much attention how they kind of do the general seamanship or how they take into account other other boaters, etc. Also, security issues was one thing, especially in. Uh, in Estonia and in Latvia, where we got, got also answers to this questionnaire. Yeah, that's about it. You have any questions? Thank you, Temu. This is going on on live, so we have people somewhere in this world following this this workshop, so the presenter had to stay here because the, it's zooming just here. And we hope we'll find find the, uh, so we're using this WebEx Hill sum system and it, that's the thing what we are using with the, uh, with for example, our partners, partners here to, to have a meeting. And uh, we, we have uh, the safety work package, which work package one and then resource efficiency, which we will hear more. But uh, the one big work package is investments. And it's related both 
to the uh, safety and resource efficiency. And now we will have uh, our, our Canadian star, Mr. Treffy Salahab, telling about <laughs> procurement procedures. Enjoy. Thanks, Heike. I wouldn't use the word star. Welcome to all of you for coming here in person. And also to those of you who came online on our Hill system, welcome to you too. It's good you could be here. Part of this project is to look also at how the procurement and the investments are done. And the collaboration and the cooperation that is done in that area. And it's not only for the upstream collaboration or procurement for finding suppliers and so forth, but also downstream future service design and service delivery. These ports will be offering, or they are offering services to the ports for the end users. So finding synergies there is also part of the goals, not only buying stuff for the for the ports. But what I did here is um, in this research part, researching the procurement, um, what I did was, is, is uh, as far as methodology, is to look at what has been done, the agendas, the minutes, uh, discuss with the people involved, and also interview the um, representatives from the various ports. And in addition to that, I also did a literature review of collaborative procurement around the world and found some really good stuff, research that has been done on this topic. And with that, a small analysis or some type of analysis as applied to the case study of Portmate, the five partners involved in the, in the 19 ports. So the first thing that came up None of this is what you would say, <clears throat> I wouldn't say that it, uh, is, it is earth shattering new, but if um, it gets us thinking when we, why do we do the things we do? I understand what's going on. I could have assumed, and we can all assume how this would go, but we know that assumptions don't get us very far. If we're all trying to develop ourselves, Assumptions don't go so far for trying to develop our ports. Assumptions don't go so far. So just taking a look at what's, what has been found. And uh, obviously, the why do we do things together? Why do the group of five members, why should they bother even collaborating to procure overall? And the first one is you expect some cost savings. If we know we're doing our purchases together, investing together, we might save some costs. We might get because the transaction costs are lowered for the time that it takes to contact and the time involved. And also maybe you might get better volume discounts. Information, finding on the supply, <clears throat> from the supply markets. One of the issues that I'll say here in advance is that how do you decide what your decision criteria are? How do you put down on there, we need this, 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 this when we buy these docks or we buy these solar panels or we buy these septic tanks or we buy um, lighting, LED lighting, safety equipment, internet solutions, information displays, buying all this stuff. How do we, how do we get that criteria and how important is, is it? How do we know how much it's gonna cost? Budgeting. So maybe we can learn together with this. And some of the things that come up overall and this may be, I, I'd start with this because this could possibly be generalized in any project. But applying it to this case study of Portmate, uh, some of the barriers to collaborative procurement include, for example, there's a lot of work to be done. The first point is there's a lot of work to be done. So when you're focusing on the cooperation, the collaboration, you might not pay attention so much to the work, other work you have to do. So that's a barrier, you've got lots of stuff to do. Um, you may not find complementary resources, people that you can, you know, sh things that you can actually share. Usually it's in the term of time or money or expertise. You may not be able to find it. And you can't always share those resources, the time of the staff. 
you know, someone in Hadle or someone in Rauma, maybe that you're not able to really second the person to come for an X amount of time and work in the other port. Um, competition can be a barrier. These ports don't co uh, really compete for customers, so from the traditional sense of competition. But competition is more in terms of the amount of projects and other work that has to be done. Other EU projects, other national projects, and they need time and energy. Some of the tensions that can happen in collaborative procurement include that there is some costs that are associated with keeping the cohesion, keeping the communication going, mainly in terms of time. It's not always easy to find common objectives. We would want this, we would want this, and this is our timing, and it's not always easy to make that just perfect. But it's not supposed to be perfect, it's about the effort, which is going good here. Sometimes there can be an uncertainty of who benefits from this. That comes up in collaborative procurement as well. The purchasing organizations vary in their complexity. We have municipalities in Sweden and, and um, also like Rauma here in Finland, where you have a separate procurement department that can give expertise and help to others. But in some other places, that's not existing. Um, here at Portmate, excellent environment for collaboration here. We have all the pieces together to have a really good collaborative effort going on. Business culture, very similar. Similar goals. There's the, um, they have this idea of social capital, this idea of personal relationships is something in the Nordic countries is something that is valued and it's used. It's not only transactional. They're fighting over price. Here we have a business culture where they can come together and, uh, build, and build relationships and so forth. That when I say here, the need for autonomy, some of the ports are more autonomous, do things on their own. Some more have to have more, there may be more rules and regulations. But there's still always the, um, okay, do, do things on your own. Think of a Finnish style of like, they and eat they, I'm going to do it myself, versus, hey, let's do it together in a group. That adds value. We all, they all have, all the ports have um, um, this downstream focus of installation. installing the solar panels. What is the customer experience? So it's not like an expert collaborative um, procurement department that's looking at the numbers and Excel sheets. They're actually seeing how the customer uses it right away on the downstream. And uh, also this is a very voluntary thing. Even though we have the EU and we have the regulations there, it's very voluntary in the sense everybody's contributing reasonable amount of continuity of the members. There have been some changes, but even though there's been some changes, everybody's up to date and participating and communicating. Um, to keep it collaborative, we also want to make sure these work. And when I say fair allocations of savings, if there are some savings in a purchasing group like this, best to keep in mind is somehow keep it fair that everybody gets a saving somewhere that the benefits kind of accrue to all. Some of the findings here in the end here is that um, go to yeah this is the right one here okay um, so what could be done? To keep up, keep things going, keep things, uh, keep frequent contact, whether it's email, web conference, live, emails, some kind of Google Drive use. That needs to be kept up. This is from I'm putting together and synthesizing some of the commentary from my interviews. Um, dealing with the competing projects, allocating time for this as well as others. Everything has to be accessible. 
We had an example of where savings could be made on a septic tank just by sharing information. Didn't go exactly, the, it wasn't the exact same item, but someone was looking at a septic tank system and another one was, and found out if we just buy a separate pump and a separate kind of cover, we could save some money. There are some slight cultural differences um, in terms of language, but the good thing is everyone's quite culturally close. I mentioned business culture earlier, but definitely there's, um, we're all on the same page, but just some little tweaks getting used to each other, whether it's English, Swedish, or Finnish, that, hey, we realize we can all communicate. Very positive and constructive atmosphere here. And uh, there would like to be, there would be a, like to me maybe that we have, um, been talking about this already at lunchtime, is that we try and work it out that we can visit the ports more often. The port members could take some time and visit. It's always great to part of that personal relationship idea. These were the key findings. I'm not um, going to list, go through the actual investments. I listed some of the items that are on there. That's kind of more overall timing, getting that coordinated. When are people buying things? For example, some suppliers will um, deliver to some ports and not to others. There are preferred suppliers and framework agreements and so forth that have to be looked at first, some specific type of uh, differences in some um, in procurement. So you may have to use certain suppliers. For example, in Chukka, there's only so many suppliers that will actually deliver there. Whereas in Söderham, they probably have suppliers that will deliver at a reasonable price. I think that's about it. Um, any questions at this point? Anything there on Hill? Anything from the room? Okay. Well, I hope you guys are hearing over there. Okay, just with him. Okay. No questions from the Hill. All right, go ahead. Thank you. So we will, the last slides of this, uh, the safety part. So, okay, the, the filming, filming started already uh, this summer here in Rauma, as Minna said that uh, we exercised, we started to exercise how to, how to find that thing and now we are more or less authorized that the flyers for that. So we, we made first the Roma marketing video and similar videos will be done from Holland and then from Sweden. And then uh, we have now material ready and uh, Kristina Kortelainen, she's on the left on that photo, she's now doing the editing work so that there will be, uh, let's say, saved videos for not so experienced poachers to choose Rauma for next summer. Yes, the, the, actually the, the six other videos we are doing, uh, especially on, on those items, what we found from the questionnaires, so there will be uh, uh, some, let's say, learning material to route planning, emergency procedures, weather, and so on. So they will be available on, on YouTube free of charge. Uh, but this, I, I would say that, that this ICT tool, that's our pearl, it will be on an open access web-based ICT solution and, and it's un, under preparation and that we'll still have a one and a half year time to do it. Can't say much more, <laughs> more about that yet, but it's it's on, on a good speed. But uh, as, as uh, Temu and uh, uh, Jeff told earlier, that if we're doing a lot of cooperation, we had to do cooperation with all these, these work packages with the partners. We also 
of course, following what's happening all over the central Baltic area. So there is, for example, these two projects running from the uh, same specific objective 3.2. So there's this information pole. It's a whale tail. That's from Sotunga, you have that kind of, yeah, you have it. Yeah, yeah. Of course you have it. You're one of the small parts and, and you're a member also for the St. Olaf's waterway. This is a pilgrim trip through the, uh, up to the Trondheim, I think. Yeah, yeah, Trondheim to Turku. Yes, so there are very different projects going on and we, we are following what, what are their, their findings and you know, other things we can we can use also, like 30 miles in the southern Finland. Okay, then we are of course following our uh, official uh, reports and uh, I was reading the report from our Coast Guard that there's something like 2,000 contacts yearly from the sea area for assistance, some kind of assistance. There's about the same amount from the inland lakes. And uh, from those 2,000, 1,600 uh, ends up sending some kind of search and rescue unit on the site. It can be the Coast Guard boat or it can be the uh, voluntary search and rescue units like we have. They have now new boats and they have a very nice station there at Pete, as you saw it in the, in the video. And they roughly made the statistics that uh, about 59% is a reason is a human error. And 35 is technical problem, and then there's some, some other things. But it's quite number, because we can think that there's not so many events in the winter time. Yes. They are in there also, but they are not so many. They are all the calls to the Marine Rescue Coordination Center. It's, it's always a, a case when you are, you're in a trouble at the beach, if half of you is in the sea and half of you is on the, on the sand. So is it the sea rescue or land rescue? You don't know where to call them. So you have to go up a little bit or down, then, it's, then you know it goes. But according to the statistics that are done, the Finnish Coast Guard, so I found out that preparing for possible unexpected situation is often poor with the boaters. So they had just renewed, oh, it's, let's say they are new action cards. And they can found from the raya.fi. They are now in Finnish language. So there are things which I would say it's good to go through before you, you start your first sailing in, in early May. And the, the action cards, they, they have a topics like emergency call, so how, how to get assistance, man overboard, engine flare, failure blackout, fire on board, we saw it's, it's coming later today, more, more about the fire, emergency anchoring, medical thing, grounding or collision, disembarking actions and sea. And for example, from, from my background from the Merchant Marine, we are we are on the passenger ships, for example, exercising these things weekly so that uh, we 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 are ready if something happens. And uh, this photo is also taken by by the drone. So from from the actual the, the video, you can take photo drone, then you can take the the photo away from from the the video. But is there any question at this moment? Okay, then, then it looks like uh, we will go back to one, one point what, what was there on, on, on the top, the fire. So on, on the most questionnaire, there was the fire mentioned quite high and it was even written separately on, on, the, on the box where you can give some, some ideas and uh, we're happy to have today here specialist on fire and uh, it's time now to get them to tell how we, we are prepared in the small port for a fire. Yeah. 
Okay, hello everyone. My name is Mark Guadalla and I work in Raumas Fire Station as a fire foreman. And, and how we are prepared to fire in Rauma. Actually, I have to remind you that every small port should have their own rescue plan. And everyone who are in the area, in the small ports area, they should have a possibility to read the rescue plan. And that is the main, main thing what everyone should read. So uh, we have, uh, in our station, we have about five, between 10 minutes standby time. And if uh, some kind of emergency situation happens, first of all, people should do the emergency call right and know the number where they should call. And that is the, our job to come stand by in a situation like that. Mm, do you have any questions from the fire or something like that, what we should remind you? Uh, every every boat should have if they have a engine over 25 kilo kilowatts and over five meter long, they should have a hand extin extinguisher. That is the first. If if there's a cabin in the boat, there should be a smoke detector, or if they use a liquid gas in the boat, they should have then a smoke detector to the liquid gas, which can warn if there's some kind of leak somewhere in the boat. But first of all, it is a hard situation. If there's a fire in a boat, then you should, uh, first of all, you should rescue yourself. That's the main, main cause what you should do. But uh, because every situation is uh, difficult, so it's uh, quite hard to say what is the right thing. But you should first rescue yourself and then make a call. And if there is uh, another one in the area, you should rescue them too. But the call is very, emergency call is a very big thing. Did you get your answer? Yes, it's a, it's, it, it is a possibility to move the other boats, but uh, if you can extinguish the fire as soon as possible, it's a good thing. But if the fire gets too high, it is a very difficult situation because there is a lot of uh, boats in the small ports, and usually when the boat fire comes, it is quite hard. The fire is very, very, the temperature is very high and it's quite difficult to extinguish the boat. But if you can move the boat, you should do it, if you can. Yes. But if it's burning, I mean, you just push it out there, it's not going to go in there. <laughs> and, and, and like I said, it's a hard situation to do that. But if you, uh, every boat should have some kind of bucket or something, you should throw water to the fire or use a hand extinguisher. We have our own equipment to do a lot bigger. Of course, we can do it. But uh, it takes about five between 10 minutes here in Rauma to get to the area. If you can do it, because you never know how people, what they are doing in an emergency situation. Someone could run away or someone can do right things, but you never know it.
Yes, you said that you. Uh, usually they are aware that, that they can shout or do something to rescue, rescue the others. So usually they know what they are doing. Of course, they are waking the others from the other boats if there's someone in sleeping in there. Yes, like I said, every small port should have a rescue plan and the stuff in the area, they should know what to do. Do you have a chance a date or something that a small, small harbor can do when they make a rescue plan? Because if you tell them that you have a rescue plan, it might sound a bit, a bit difficult to do. Uh, in Finland, we have a... Yes, in Finland we have a template to that, yes. So you mentioned that uh, you should or you could throw water on a burning boat. How about most of the boats are made of glass fiber? When glass fiber is burning, how does water react to that? Uh, the glass fiber, when it's burning, it's the temperature is very high. The water is not it may not help uh, a lot. So we have a we have a foam in a situation like that, alcohol resistance foam. That's one thing what we can use. But we also have a, uh, water pumps, and uh, we have so much that water that then it helps to the fire. But usually a bucket when you throw it to the fire, when the glass fiber burns into it does not help that much. That's what I meant, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, every situation when the boat is uh, firing in the port, it is difficult. And what are the main reasons for fire? Like Usually, the most com most uh, I think when the people are not, they're a little bit drunk, I think. That is the main reason. <laughs> Usually they make food. <laughs> Any other questions? In a small port area. Yeah, yeah. No. But that, that is also a small port. Uh, I think the ghost guard is the fastest way to get there because we have our own boats over there, so they are not so weak. But the ghost guard is weaker in a situation like that because the Kuruma Pihla is so quite far away from Rome. Uh, we get the area approximately 30 minutes, and then, the but then we are very quick. But uh, approximately 30 minutes between one hour. Yes. It is, uh, uh, every small uh, port operator, they should 
edu educate their own stuff. And they should read the rescue plan. <laughs> and familiarize the, themselves to that rescue plan. So it is uh, very important to do that. Okay. Uh -huh. Actually, actually, we uh, we don't educate those. If though, that we will educate if they come and ask for education. No, not automate. Not automate. No. No. For example, startupelastus.fi. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. It's good, 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 good to hear about the fire. From the from the specialist point of view, and and always think about the, the island situation that should it more strict requirements for the uh, for the staff, for example, 24/7, and 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 they're like like education side also that they are prepared that they are not the first one to run that everyone can do. I, I would say well, not all, but good. I, I'll, I think we'll slowly move to the uh, next topic, and it's uh, about resource efficiency on that side. <laughs> yes, and it's our our guest speaker from Turku. And uh, we will find the uh, find the. Uh, presentation and and uh, it was good Katarina you could come here and uh, tell them more about the Pirasaris to Siistina keep the archipelago clean registered association and um, you you have a quite bunch of uh, leaflets brochures with you and and you just move like, like this it. yeah yeah and if you get very fancy you can do it like this so it's okay. changing <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah. Of course, like. Yeah, yeah. And remember to smile to the okay. camera. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome also on my behalf. My name is Katrina Murto, and I work um, at the Keep the Archipelago Tidy Association. I will talk about CAT later on, so it's a shortening of our our name. I work as um, district manager at the area of uh, the, Fini uh, the Turku archipelago, the uh, Botnik Gulf, and then also the eastern, eastern Gulf of Finland. But uh, here I'm today to speak to you about Rope Harbor program, which is an um, environmental program for Finnish harbors. And this is only for Finnish harbors, so it's, it's not international program yet. But uh, to start with, how many of you know what we do, what uh, Keep Archipelago Tidy Association stands for, and what's our work? Who knows our our logo, which is here? Okay, so pretty pretty well known. Not so well known in Holland, no, <laughs> unfortunately. We've been there earlier, but um, nowadays we work only here in in the um, Finland area, in land Finland. But uh, we are quite old organization. We started almost 50 years ago, as you can see, 1969. 
and uh, the work started as an initiative of uh, individual people who kind of got sick of all the rubbish and uh, everything what they found from from the island shores around outer archipelago of Turku. And they decided that something has to be done because um, those days it was quite normal to, to have your rubbish bag, put some stones in it and throw it overboard. <coughs> and glass bottles, you just drop them, uh, you just broke them and throw, throw them into the water. So that's when, when we started uh, having some rubbish bin, bins, as you can see there. There is the sign of Holstaria Rent there. Uh, it was it was earlier the same logo with them but um, yeah just hands on deck real concrete work with with the rubbish and waste let's go to that one i think it's jumping now yeah um, yeah and that's what we still do I can't show these pictures without a big smile. There is our newest uh, service boat, MS Robe, which works at the archipelago around Turku. And uh, it's almost one year old now. And it's it's totally beautiful tool for our work. And we are really proud of it because earlier we used to have this uh, smaller, smaller boat and it was uh, the capacity of the boat was totally too, sm too small for for our job in in turku area nowadays we can we can manage a one week's uh, waste tour around the outer archipelago islands and we don't have to go to empty it anywhere we have a, a rubbish pressure also on, on the deck so that's really handy and uh, yeah, we can we can empty the septic tanks we have in in archipelago area with the own own boat. There are twenty cubic meters space for wastewater, and the crane is huge. It can lift almost one uh, thousand kilos from twenty meters, so it, it it makes our work really really much easier at the day at nowadays. So we still work with the rubbish and waste but during the years our our uh, work got a bit bigger and there came new topics because of infrication and uh, other things coming up about environmental issues it wasn't only rubbish and and waste that that was the problem in the sea area one important part of our our job nowadays is environmental information. So give the knowledge to, to the boaters, people who, who spend recreational time around waterways and uh, tell them how to behave and uh, do things right so, so that we can live as we live at the moment and spend our spare time, free time in, in the, on the islands because I think in Finland we have quite a free culture of going around. We have uh, every man's rights and they, they give us lots and lots of opportunities and freedom, but also they, they give us, we have to be responsible about our nature and the places we go. So we can, we can do that also years to come. On the right hand side, there is, a, map of Finland and there you can see the areas where we work at the moment. The work started from, from archipelago area, from uh, southwest Finland, and then it spread out to, to the lake, lake side, lake part of Finland, and also north, as, as I said, to the Botnik, Gulf of Botnia and uh, yeah, east, eastern Gulf of Finland. So we uh, we operate almost the most important areas of, of recre recreational boating in Finland. So there you can see our service boats. We have four service boats on those, on those areas. Uh, our financing comes from three main points. 
we have um, almost 13,000 members. That number has been the same for, I would say, 15 years. So, so long I've been working here and my colleagues who've been working longer, they say that it has been always between 12 and 13,000 members. The membership fee is not that big, it's 30 euros per year. And, uh, but that's the, that's the main point of our financing our members. They are, they are the most important thing for us to have the members. Also, we get financing from Ministry of the Environment. And then we have sponsors, companies who, who want to support our work and they see that, that what we do is important and fits in their, their program. Any questions about cuts in, in general? I can answer them later also. You can always interrupt and ask if there is something you want to know. Because now I was thinking about going to the harbor program I'm here to tell you about. About the, yeah. the, the boats? You have yeah. You have four boats. Yes. Are they all on the boat just able to change the safety? Um, not into tanks that are in the hull, because, uh, for example, the old rover we, ha we had in Turku area, we had to take uh, these kind of plastic cubic containers mm -hmm. on the deck and empty them to there. But now we can take them into, into the containers that are, are in the hull. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the only boat we can, we can do it. So but always it is possible to be done in, in some way you can do it. But then again, if, if the, the deck is small, you can perhaps take six cubic meters or cubic, uh, those uh, containers on top of it. So it's smaller and of course harder way to do it. There is, um, as I was said, I have some brochures here. These are in Finnish, Swedish and English, and these are about all the work we do, not especially from the program, perhaps you can put them to the floor, especially if there are guests from other countries, and so, so those might be good. Okay, but then to the Robe, Robe Harbor program, as we call it, it can be a Robe Port program. We don't really have an um, English name for it, an official English name for it. But it's Robestamo Ohjelma in Finnish and Selleham program for Svenska. And that is, as I said, it's our environmental program to Finnish harbors. And we started in uh, 2010. When we started, uh, there were about 30 to 35 harbors involved. And they were old blue flag harbors that changed straight to Robe Harbor program. Nowadays we have, or this year, we had uh, 43 harbors. And I'm not sure if this link is now working, but could I just push here? No, yes. Oi. And now I go here. I'll show you the map about where, where those harbors are situated at the moment. So they are kind of nationwide would be this part, but then we have Kemi, which is the northmost harbor for the program. Almost half of them are in, in the lake, Finland, and then other half are around the southern coast. And uh, here we have a big, big gap between the western coast. So for example, in Rauma there is or there are no Robe Harbors at the moment. And how do I go back? <laughs> okay. And thank you. Yes. So I'm quite happy with the number of, of the harbors and um, because there could be some more, but uh, 43 is quite a nice number, or 40, 50 is quite a nice number because it's manageable for, for a small organization like, like we are. 
The goals of the Robe Harbor program are to develop harbors of all sizes. Um, there has been different environmental programs, international programs, but most of them, they concentrate on big harbors and they concentrate on harbors whose uh, operating time is much, much longer than what we have here in, in Northern Hemisphere. Like um, a month for a harbor in, in Finland, it's quite long operating time. If, if you have a month on full, full uh, time operating, it's quite good, especially when you think about last summer, which was perhaps two weeks or something. Oh, that what some people said after after the boaters had been there for two weeks and then the summer was born. Also, uh, we want to want to. Uh, this is part of our environmental uh, information because we want to tell our or tell these uh, environmental issues to to the boaters and we want to, them to have the opportunity to do their things right when they go to a sh uh, to small port. So they have the toilets, they have the rubbish bins, they have uh, perhaps septic tank emptying systems. When they go there, they, they feel safe, they feel um, well. Oh, I think important thing is also that uh, the service is good. So as, as we were, you were talking about, about safety issues, I'm talking about the environmental issues, but then I always think there is a third part, the third leg for, for uh, harbors are the service, and those are always together. There can't be um, environmental environmentally friendly harbor without taking care of in, uh, those um, issues of uh, service and safety. If the safety issues are taken care of, I assume also the environmental issues are taken care of, so they always go together. But this is the way to, to also educate the boaters to, to uh, work as environmental friendly people. Robe Harbors, they, they get this fl flag as their sign of being part of the program, and then they also have those diplomas and they have it every year, so the, the number changes underneath underneath the diploma. So that's the sign that the harbor is, or the port is part of, of the program. What we then ask the harbors to do, or what they are required to have, they have to have a person who is, in, uh, who is uh, responsible about the environmental matters. So not really a chief, but someone who who takes care that the environmental issues are taken care of and they are uh, valued and they are valued not only once a year but but more often they have to have well organized waste disposal and that me that means that there are also small rubbish bins around the harbor so so uh, for the boaters it's easy to Again, easy to work and do the right thing. So if they have something in their hand, they can put the rubbish away and they don't have to carry it a long way. Of course, the wastewater disposal has to be has to be done well. And um, this also includes septic tank emptying systems. It's not necessary to have it at one harbor. If, if the harbor is a robber harbor, it's not a requirement to have an, an own uh, septic tank, tank emptying system, but it's requi required to let the people know where the nearest is. So also cooperation between harbors, there is no point of having perhaps in two, two harbors close to each other to, to have these big investments, but if they can do it together and put some place where, where the fairway goes and, and it's easy for the boaters to access, it's perhaps the best best solution. The overall um, overall harbor has to be clean and tidy, so you don't go there and see all these cigarette tons and uh, rubbish around. Also, the waterway has to be clean because it's a thing where I quite often pay attention is when you when you go to small harbor, the corners in the in the pool, they have all the rubbish. There are 
perhaps cans, tins, whatever, plastic bags. And I always, when I go to harbors like that, I, I say that it's not, it's, it's a small, small job to have someone to take a little, um, how do you call it, harvey, where you just take take it away, uh, yeah, in it, and um, it's a couple of minutes, and it, it's a lot, it's a big thing for, for the visitor, and it's a sign of tidiness if, if there is no waste or rubbish in the, in the pool. And as discussed earlier, safety matters, they are, they are important, and safety matters are also, they are part of that big picture of clean and tidy harbor. If there are all hoses and stuff like that going around on the piers, it doesn't really give a good picture of the harbor. And then you always think that if I take water to, to my tank from that hose that is lying on the, on the pier and everyone is walking on, on top of it, it can't be clean and it's not really, really good drinking water after that. And also, as discussed about the safety safety plan, rescue plan, we ask the harbors to have an uh, environmental plan, environmental code of conduct, and also the rescue plan. And if the rescue plan, it might be 20 pages for a harbor. If it's not visible for, for all the poachers, and of course, no one, no one, not everyone will want to read that big, big rescue plan. There has to be code of conduct, how to react, what to do when when something happens, if something happens. But the rescue plan is, is very good to have at the harbor, at least for the staff to read, because the staff changes every summer. There might be new people coming in. And uh, if the harbor manager don't have time to, to uh, kind of familiarize the, the new staff so well, at least they can give this booklet that read this so you know where you can find the information and you might have a little hint what to do if something happens. And one important thing also is that there has to be will to develop. So if, if uh, the harbor is not or the port is not ready yet and there might be things to, that are not finished and, and they want to develop that's enough. They, they have the will to, to go further in, in environmental issues and in safety issues. And also, of course, this service part. Then I have some pictures of, of Robe Harbors. This is who knows the place. I have to, this comes a bit in between, but um, I was asked to advertise our harbor seminar that takes place every spring and next spring we are going to to Öre to have our harbor seminar there this is from Öre might be a bit uh, not so familiar picture of Öre because there is it's not so full <laughs> so there's space but here for example you can see the poles with uh, safety equipment over there over there they have to be enough of them then there is information board, which is very important. Uh, I've used to say that it's it's the, the an extra person in a harbor when you have a good information board. There is something when the voucher comes in, they can go to check. They are not asking about everything all the time. They can check some basic things from the information board. There are also the code of conduct, in environmental information, perhaps information about nature tracks if, if there are opening hours, codes for sauna, sauna hours, whatever. So it's it's quite important to have information. Information table well maintained. So this was Öre. Oops, now we go here. And that's also from uh, from Öre. There is a septic pump out station that is maintained by us because it's the floating one. And then a thing that I have heard lots of good feedback is that this washing place that is in Öre Harbor. There are also in their code of conduct, their co conduct there is uh, a sentence where it is said that uh, prefer this place to do your dishes because it's a small, small harbor. 
And if there are 60 boats, 70 boats, and everyone washes their dishes there every morning, every evening, the, the load is quite a big. So, and this is a nice place. I've been washing our dishes there, and it's, it's like the sun is going down, and it's nice and warm, and it's a social, social place to discuss with other, other people. So if you do it well, people, people also start using it. Then we, we are quite uh, worried about, in some places, um, about the uh, waste uh, treatment, especially when, when it's a uh, question about oil, petrol, batteries, stuff like that. And uh, this is especially a problem in some places when you have home harbors, big home harbors. And Rope harbors can be also, they can be home harbors, so they don't have to be only visiting harbors. And then you can see the two sides of if, if you can do it like on the left-hand side or on the right-hand side where when it's... Also, when you open the door, I have a picture from inside too. It, it, it looks tidy. It's not like the other one. So when, when you create the place where people can behave right, most of most of us, we, we do it right and we don't leave it like that. But then when there is the first battery left on, on the ground, after a while there are 10 of them. And it's the same thing with oil. And what we do with the rubber harbors, what, what the harbors get from us, is that um, we have a, we have a little, oh, on our, on our web, web page we have uh, a package where where you can have where, where you can find some um, templates for how to use, how to do safety directions rescue rescue plan and there are these major things that normally are used in in regulation for conduct for example and the harbors can go and just make them to fit their environment there change their name change whatever there are to change but but still they have the main things so it's easy easy to, to take taken use. We have training in environmental and safety matters and one, one of the training session in a way is, is the harbor seminar we keep in or we uh, hold in, in it's April this year so when we go to Ere but that's one one quite uh, famous way of, of having the environmental and safety matters told to harbor operators. And also visibility in our networks, on our web pages. And then the harbors can use the logo and the status in their marketing, for example, in their web pages and uh, brochures, wherever they want to. And uh, also whatever material we have, for example, environmental information for boaters. If asked, we send material to them. Or we can, for home harbors, we, we can give some um, articles to have in their in their yearly booklets and stuff like that, and also the opportunity to sell Robe products. What is our <coughs> Robe Tuotte? Our product, what we with our logo we we sell. There is a picture of uh, or two pictures of different different information tables and. Um, as you can see, there is a big, big one, one, two. So we all know the number where to call, but in an emergency situation, it might be hard to remember still. So it's important to have all these. There are rescue plans. There are there is a map telling where where all the fire extremities are, and um, also numbers who to contact. Whatever ever happens, numbers of uh, harbor harbor manager harbor chief or who is the responsible of the harbor and uh, all those important things. Also, in there should be, there are weather forecasts for coming coming week. And also, I think it's good to, to use these places to tell about the services that are around, not also in the harbor, or, or only in the harbor, but around the harbor. So if there are shops or restaurants or whatever, so it's quite good to have 
cooperation also in that one. And in practice, what we do with the rubber harbors, we uh, the application is open all the time. So if a harbor or port is interested in participating in the program, they can fill in the harbor now, uh, the, the form now, and um, they are. We go through them quite like every every time of the year. The membership fee is 120 euros, which is quite low. So. So it hardly is the question of money to take part. We want to have this program as a small step program to to come and pay attention to environmental and safety issues. So it's it's not it's not that difficult to join. We do a tour to the harbors every year if they want, but. Uh, at least every second, every third year, we go to visit the harbor and see that everything is in, in condition, and also to to have a dialogue with the with the harbor managers and um, see what they think, what they want to want from us, if they need any help in these fields, what we can help in, and uh, just to have the contact between us and the harbors. And as shown earlier, there was the rubber flag and uh, web pages, discounts these little small things that comes as, as a top of the top of the thing that a harbor can be a robber harbor with a robber flag. There is more information on our web page, also in Swedish. So all the pages about robber harbor the same same is in Finnish and in Swedish. So if if needed you can check from there more about it. I have also a little um, paper, which this might be a bit moist because the weather was quite uh, rainy while I was walking here. But for the harbor managers, I can give these can be Kli and Selleham. So there is all what needs to be known if you are interested about the program. But I can leave them perhaps somewhere or to you. So. Yes, so any questions about our main work or <laughs> our program? Yeah. You showed the, the pictures, uh, the, uh, two examples of uh, uh, rubbish or the waste management. The one, on the right, uh, right hand. Yes, this, that one. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what is there inside the box? In the box? Yes. I think there should be batteries. But the whole but there is everything. Milk. But the whole echo is left. Oh, in, in there? Yes, inside. Oh, oh the there, is, uh, there is a place for batteries, a place for waste oil, oil rugs. Um, if you mean that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the echo simplex, it's, uh, it's empty quite uh, regularly. So it's part of having the echo simplex. It, it includes the emptying it perhaps once a month or so on. So and it's quite some kind of block. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, oh, this is open because this is in in um, home harbor that it's kind of secured area anyway. But the problem with the other one is that it's it's open space and everyone can use it, and that's not only for boaters. Uh, boaters, I think there are lots of lots of other people using it because it's open. But then again, if it's closed, do people leave everything? On the outside of it, but in a home harbor where people are committed to to the cleanness and tidiness of the harbor, it's much easier to do. Yeah, but that's Eco Simplex is one good example how to to maintain it well. And no entrance for the animals or the birds. No, yeah. no, no. And of course there is uh, the floor is very well secured if there are leaks or something, so they don't go on the ground. But from there, as you can see, it comes to the ground also. Uh, and if you have what kind of cooperation between We have uh, not really sister organization in, in that way, but uh Rent is one and Hoya Estimet is also one that 
we we have cooperation with and uh, the cooperation it takes place mostly during the projects what we have so international projects are the place where we have the cooperation but as i showed in the first pictures there was the sign of call Sverigeent. so i think that's kind of a way where we started from and first we had the same same logo with them before we ended up with the sea logo Yeah, yeah, the who are participating? Who are participating? Yeah. Who is welcome? Uh, every, everyone who is everyone who is interested about um, safety, environmental issues uh, in in small harbors. There are people from from municipalities. Uh, there are boat clubs, people representing boat clubs, and um, also here are a few people who have been attending to to the seminars. <laughs> You can tell your own opinion of them, and um, yeah, it's, it's it's open to everyone who is interested in it. And I really recommend it. It's it's a nice place for for harbor managers and um, municipalities to to cooperate, to have time to discuss about common problems, to find solutions for for problems they might face during this, for example, short season we have during some special things that we only in Finland have so that's quite it has been pretty popular yeah you told us you have been in Holland why did you go away <laughs> <laughs> actually that have happened before my time I, I've been I've been to working with the organization 15 years now I think but uh, it was some, somewhere in the 90s, I think. And still you can find the old signs, for example, in Tjökkar. There, there are the old, old signs of uh, Fro Peselle. And uh, perhaps there happened something in, in the, I don't know, government in, in Holland. I'm, I'm not pretty sure why, why it changed. Yeah, it but it... Yeah, that's true. I, I don't know. I don't know the main reason for that, but of course, uh, one thing is that it, it might be something that people there wanted to do it themselves, and they thought that they don't have places like we have where they don't have service like we have in in outer archipelago around Turku. So we are not in every place, but those places and at. at now it's it's of course a question of capacity because our boats can't go everywhere. But for example, if if there is boat somewhere and and personnel for it, it's we are open to all suggestions about it. No, I've, ne I've never done it. <laughs> no, I've never done it. No. But it's really the commitment. The, the it's, a, it's a commitment, and, and if they are committed, they, they are uh, ready to find solutions. So they they have a little rope in their heart if, if they are with us because they, they want to do it right. Yeah, the commitment is the main thing. So there is always, there has been a solution for how, if there is a problem, how to solve it. Yes, still. Okay, thank you. We we'll continue with. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We will welcome. Thank you, thank you for interesting presentation. And we'll find out why you left Holland. <laughs> <laughs> that that's uh, on the priority list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we will we will find that out. Okay, and then we'll continue uh, our uh, resource efficiency presentations. So. Uh, 
Peter Derstein, please welcome on the floor. Thank you. So I will tell about the resource efficiency study, which we have been doing in the Portmate project. We have been working this, this presentation together with Teemu Heikkinen, and Teemu has promised to help me if I lose all the words and <laughs> stop speaking. And of course, we have been doing the work together with the, with the group or the project members, and we are, we are making the report about the resource efficiency at the moment. Uh, so the main goals of this work package too about the resource efficiency. So to increase and share the knowledge of the resource efficient, efficient and sustainable solution for small port operations. And, and in this port made project, we are investing to sustainable and resource efficiency, efficient infrastructure or services in some of those our small ports. And then we also uh, enhance the resource efficiency and sustainability of small ports so that the volume of boating can increase without unreasonable environmental effects. So now at this moment, in, we are uh, on a second period of our boardmate project. So at this moment, our first level investments are planned and implemented and those experiences are documented and will be said. And then we are also preparing a report, what is the perfect small board between resource efficiency and best practices and sustainability. And how the work is done, what we are doing, how we are preparing the report. We have been benchmarking these board made boards and also all the, also the other small boards where we are visiting, our group members are visiting, making notices and collecting the good practices. And, and we have had the workshops today. We are having the one here in Rauma and we have had the one also in, in Jevle in February this year. And we have studied publications and background material of this subject. And, and we are utilizing the knowledge of sustainable technologies of SAMC, from SAMC and our personnel in SAMC. And then we have uh, kept uh, our work package meetings. Totally, there will be four meetings in this during this period. And um, so we, we, when we started to work, we were thinking that how we, how we how can we say that, that this is resource efficiency for this board or that board? And then we, were, we, were, we started to think that what kind of small boards there is. And um, because it, it depends, it's different depending on the, what type of the board is. And, and it depends on the type of the small board and what kind of infrastructure there is in the board. Is there electricity available? how the water management is done, how the waste management is done, is there roads coming in the board? Uh, then we have to know the nat natural environment in the board, how vulnerable, vulnerable the place is, is there some protected areas, for example, um, is, is the board like, is the water very shallow, is the water is uh, changing well or not, that kind of things. Uh, then, of course, the number of visitor, is it very popular, small board, or is it uh, how much people there are visiting there? And how is the accessibility for the sport to the board? Is it in a coast or is it an island? Is there a, a bridge that you can come to the island or is there a ferry connect connection? Those kind of things affect affect or what to that what kind of small boat that is and like more visitors more sensitive natural environment 
if there's no infrastructure existing, the more severe environmental effects the boating may have. And in, in the previous seminar, uh, this kind of classification of the small boats was done. So, and there was, um, we classified those small boats in five different type of ports. So in the first, there is a guest uh, harbor in the city or town center. And we have also some example pictures of, of those different different kind of ports. Actually, I think those all are from Sweden, those pictures. Um, the second one is guest harbor on the coast, um, also in the coast, but uh, and close to some attractions. And then third one is guest harbor at the node in archipelago. And fourth one is guest harbor or pier in a natural archipelago. And then we also have the fifth type of port is like natural port. And in the last uh, workshop session, there was listed different kind of services that they may be in these different kind of ports. So if the port is in the city center or town center, very close to that, there you can expect that there are almost all the services available and also the um, connection to the municipal infrastructure there. Those are listed something, for example, what there can be found, not, not all in all the places, but anyhow, these kind of things visitors can expect to find there. Then if the guest harbor is on the coast and close to some attractions, there might not be that many services as there is in the city center, but still there are quite much services, electricity, recycling station, drinking water. And then there is some, some attractions, why, why people are coming there by boat and also maybe other way. Uh, then the next one is the guest harbor in at the node in the archipelago. And there's some limitations in the services because of the, the it's located in the archipelago. There is still maybe electricity, a recycling station, but there can be, for example, um, dry toilets. And, and, and it's not clear that is there a water, for example, water, maybe not all the places have the water for boats available. Some more limitations in the services in that case. And, and then guest harbor or beer in the natural archipelago. What you can expect there, swimming place, Troy toilet, could be recycling station or some waste collection. And, and services available on boating season, but limited, limited on all services and stuff out of the high boating season. Don't, yeah, that kind of uh, ideas of, of that. And then it's the natural boats, no, no services at the board, but, but um, place marked where to anchor or disbunked to go to shore. And those, those will be, during the project, those will be marked in, in this ICT tool, those board made natural boards. And also the, the safety instructions for arrival, stay and departure belong to this board made project. So then uh, about these different type of small boards, we, we were um, um, making this table that uh, what's, what's there? Uh, is there a municipal infrastructure available? 
limited, limitedly available or not available. Then we were uh, estimating the amount of the visitors. Is the amount of visitors high, medium or low? And the sensitivity of the nature. There, low, medium and high. And then also the accessibility for the, that type of the board. And that's also the high, medium and low. And that makes us, to, that, that kind of um, classification and table helps us to estimate what kind of what kind of uh, technology is resource efficient in what kind of board? Because it's not the same for all, all of the types. Uh, we, about the energy issues. So traditional energy supply in small board for electricity. So grid electricity from national grid, if it's that possible. And in some cases, aggregation with, with fossil fuel, fuel. And more, if you are thinking more sustainable energy solutions for small ports, solar panel systems, aggregation with biofuel, and also wind power could be possible for, for, for some, some places. Uh, then for heat and hot water uh, supply for national uh, or small ports. So if there's strict, strict, strict heating available, for example, those small ports which are in the city center, uh, oil heating with fossil fuel, that's also com like traditional way, and electrical heating. And if we are thinking about more sustainable solutions, the heating could be done with biofuel, wood, wood chips, pellet, biogas, or we can have solar collectors, and also heat, pump, heat pumps are more sustainable solutions for producing heat. Uh, if we want to uh, improve the energy efficiency of our operations, then the heat pump technology can be used and will be used also in, in port made project, LED lighting, uh, building and service automation, light and movement sensor, for example, scheduling when the lights are on, that kind of things. And then there is a picture of, from Yevle where the LED lighting is already invested and, and put in, in the small boat there. Then about the water management. So if there's municipal infrastructure available, use that. That's, that's good. Uh, other options for fresh water supply? Well, purified surface water and purified and desalinated seawater. And other options for wastewater treatment, if, if there's no connection to municipal infrastructure or that can't be done, private or communal treatment equipment or, or septic tank with emptying service. Uh, waste management, uh, so there's all type of waste formed in boats and there's limited space in boats and that may cause for some boaters lack of willingness for sorting in boat. And, um, and these challenges of waste collection leads to, <laughs> or these challenges of sorting leads to the mixed weight waste collection. And this Pitasaris to see in a keep archipelago tidy association, as we just heard, has done important work for waste management and education of that in in the archipelago. And management consider bio waste composting on site. And in some cases, even the local biogas production might be possible if there are other other bigger operators that, that 
the waste bio waste is formed. Some pictures of waste management uh, solutions uh, in the right, right left hand side. There's a picture from Yevle. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why it's doing that. Over here, the problem with the this one yes working so there's a picture of from Yevle where the waste management um, or sorting invested this summer of the rope sorting action and and then and, and, and also the information what kind of information Robert uh, point is providing for visitor. So then, in addition to this, there are several other services available in the in the small ports. They might not uh, be so big things for if you think about like you know for nature or environment but anyhow they they might be very important for the for the visitors and how they see the board and and how sustainable they see and and so what some ideas or how you sustainable for 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 the voters how they see your operations you if you prefer the local and seasonal product for groceries and if there is a restaurant available there in a port selling something other stuff think about the packaging when they are taking the boaters are taking those in the boat they will be waste and the attractions nature attractions natural capacity visitors in the consideration to use light vehicles maybe electrical if the porters need to transport or go somewhere outside of the port communication and education uh, is important sustainable services available available in the small board and uh, to attract especially those lowest uh, visitors so those kind of um, are more aware of environmental things those same consumers are also doing the boating uh, educate the visitors of, of the limitation of the small port the amount of water and treatment of it lenses of the waste management explain if some solutions that you some, some cause some inconvenience for the visitors for example if you have to if the visitors have to carry carry the water in the sauna of course they are using but somebody that, that's inconvenience but but if you explain that water are not available also the the use the but technology 
thinking, which is common in industry. So best available technology it also takes the cost aspect. Make the cost of investment with relation to the benefit and, and environmental impact. What kind of effect for the visitors that has? So for especially for those Lohas visitors with those lifestyles of health and sustainability, those put high decisions and and also the others think that convenience or is that causing some so those kind of things uh, studied about the resource efficiency any any questions or comments at this point Uh, yeah, the, 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 like the place that the visitors are from different places are coming. For example, if they are going to from Finland to Sweden, that's the place where or oh, everybody is stopping there. Ferry connections in there and right, like quite busy place. A lot of visitors coming for different different reasons. Yeah, yeah. So what are some examples? Of a node. Is there some between here and uh, Sonia, for example, where talking between Bob and Latvia? In Orland, what place do you think are the nodes? Oh, yes. There's more than one. Novel is also a. It's not a city hall, right? So this is not a city. Well, they're on the Sambai Airport, and we're not traveling between anywhere. You can do it. Yeah, you can also. I just want to know why. It's good though, without getting if it's good, good idea of what kind of things go on, you know, without being. But I, I'm sure about like when you say guest travel, for example. <laughs> Yes, 
and then we have, of course, we have the major other things that come. I would rather ask you how to doing this thing. And if you're missing the water, the water is not at all the same. But far out in the other part, then you can have either the luxury one, even if you would be like the best of the best. Be hard if you're doing the work already. Then, then another thing that is quite new is that they think that these are like where you keep your dogs and you have, you have your club and everything going there. Come with some uh, play things, some things. Bring them up and tell the parent, hey, we would like to have you as guest. Yes. Just being so yeah. the gentleness, um, they might be the main part of Yes, like this book. And then the third thing that is definitely the, the cup thing to do, same thing to do, be part of you. Both. 25 to 45, it's not if you're young. <laughs> Very different way of living and, and behaving. Thing that maybe you don't want to own the boat, maybe you want to share the boat. Something like that, and then the culture. It's also because in Finland there's certain clubs that have The last last week we did this um, for dogs to put all our clubs on mats. We used to have them just as uh, posters. Some of those up like this. So we, we went through all the clubs. Well, this way there may be both by the first or in the army. If they wish us to know them, all about who to find them in our house. All right? That's it. Okay, the club and all the workers have also some of those little pots that they, they own. Most of them. Cleaning club came in. Nowadays, if you are really in the bay, so you can just find the harbor to get in. There is a big room. Yeah. The old fashioned way of cleaning with a towel. <laughs> 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 I, I'm staying for Cody. <laughs> 
Okay, time for the last presentation, and we are lucky to get stage the, of the municipal of, of our partnership. One of those living in Sotunga, so you're not what you're living, so you're one of those 96 persons. <laughs> Uh, my name is uh, Kenneth Lundström and, and wo working in uh, Sotunga, three central Baltic uh, projects. The first one, smart ports, and then, then the port mate that we are talking today, and then some taller waterway is uh, We can see the results. Uh, uh, from the smart port project uh, uh, done done in Sotunga. Port that goal was to make uh, some some kind of uh, for the, for the, for the harbor. So you can see the nice whale whale tail there, the service uh, kiosk, this kiosk. Uh, and uh, in, in that thing, uh, uh, or with that thing, you can you can uh, book and pay and, and get uh, also from other ports that have have that kind of, of thing. And every port in in this smart port project, so you can see them here. I think there are uh, about sixteen ports. There are, every, every port have, has whale tail. And uh, then we had also built uh, three three. Um, uh, small kiosk for local uh, sailors uh, for handicrafts, uh, fish, bread, and, and things like that. And we have renovated the uh, salteria at the restaurant that you can see there on, on, on the picture. And uh, then uh, made some uh, on, on pay parking area is, is, is also. Put the parking area and, and make make it uh, better. If you want you can go to the to the project's uh, uh, web page uh, smart, smartports.net. Uh, also the whale tail you can see see it from the heliports.com. There you can get more information as it. Every uh, every inf information that you will that you want to have in uh, from from your own port you can put in in that thing. Uh, that you want to show for port. port. Here you see the, the harbor planning that we have made, made uh, and, and uh, it's a very important uh, some kind of steering doc doc document for 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 development uh, uh, work in, in the There is also the uh, Estonian and uh, Latvian port that are, are with, within in this small port uh, project. You can see Sotunga there and the Shagos Pictures in, in Sweden. Today we are talking with the uh, po talking port mate and we see Söderham, Gävle and Havspaljong and Sotunga and, and Samkten here there were today that are lead part in this project. For our uh, part in this project, we have uh, had a uh, goal to also to make some uh, um, that were maybe the import, most important investments were, were to buy buy a float, uh, floating uh, docks, and, and then we have now we are, I can see there in the upper picture uh, four 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 uh, docks then uh, 12 meter long and uh, 3.9 meter. Uh, for, With, with 
and then, then also on them we have some some uh, going to have electrical and water poles six uh, so have plan to make a, a sauna and and uh, then to the wastewater from from the port to the municipal pipe uh, and and dig uh, some work, work uh, yeah. and uh, 1.5 kilometer that you can connect to the uh, and, and uh, municipal wastewater system and also see the solar solar panels that we have also now made this summer you know, there on the restaurant roof yeah. Uh, what do you mean important? Yes, uh, Temo, have, have, have some, some dialogues uh, with us and, and uh, get some, some important information. So I don't understand the technical things about the solar panels. Oh. Yeah, now we're building a box around it there so, so for winter time. Thanks. I thought the solar panels only on this side on the roof, or is it on? side on the roof, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. the sunny side, yeah, yeah. sunny side yeah, of yeah. the roof. Yeah, yeah. How many you said? 20, 20, 20 panels, yeah. 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 Connected to the electricity because we have to do our, our electrical work first in the harbor. After that you can connect them to the system. There may be May, May uh, com coming visitors and tourists in May, but uh, usually the restaurant is open from June, August, summertime. How, how much do you plan to get out of this? Um, or maybe the demo knows how, how much we <laughs> <laughs> the electricity can make. 5 kilowatts system, so. Yeah, 5.2. To the to the electricity is uh yeah. 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 But the project is Santula Waterway, <coughs> as uh, Heike already mentioned, uh, some, some kind of pilgrim route. There is a project partner, Oba Academy and Yrkes Högskola Novia. And then Vargas, Forening uh, Francisco from Kjökar, Söderham, uh, Östhammar in Sweden, and Pilgrim Steed is in Sweden, Sorting, of course, municipality. Here you can see the route here from, from uh, Turku uh, due, uh, to, to Kjökar and uh, Sortunga here and uh, over Åland, main Åland island, and then to Visle Hamle now, from there up to Hudiksvall and over to, to Trondheim. Uh, new, new route about 650 kilometers up to Hudiksvall, and after that there is already an existing route that you can travel along. And uh, the new with this, it's a waterway, <coughs> but uh, on Kjökar and Sottunga you, you have also local, local tracks that you can walk, walk around, as you see here. <coughs> Here is the port when you're coming to, to Sotunga. And then we have now made a new track here on the west side of Sotunga over the mountains, hills. 
and then you have a different uh, uh, kind of, of local small tracks and uh, roads that you can, can walk around and hike around on Sotinga. Now, I think it's about 15 kilometers if you walk through the mall. If some sailors are coming to the port and, and uh, thinking what, what should, would we do next day, they maybe can walk around in Sotunga and then stay a, a night, a night longer for the business and you can see you have some picture from the nature of Sotunga. Here is uh, when went to and I don't know what, what it is in, in English, there's some kind of, of uh, cabin there, and then, then we are also going to renovate that uh, with money from this the way kind of uh, information center on Sotunga. Uh, hey, here you can see some, some wooden boats, and it's in this uh, pilgrim route, it's on, on water, it's waterway, you can, you can sail from, from especially from, from Turku, and then during the uh, Turku archipelago of the uh, Korp, and from Korpu to Churkar, it's a waterway way route also, and you can sail by, by your own boat or by kayak and, and, and some, some other boats, o also by ferries, the big boats, and, and then when you're coming to, to Sotum, you can, can uh, lend or rent a bike and you can also go by bike around Sotunga and you can you do the same on, on Churkar. You don't have, have to, to walk all the, the route, you can maybe can choose a, for, for a one year you can choose to come to, to Sotunga and Churkar and you can be in there and, and, uh, and, and, and uh, try what we have, have to offer there in, in the archipelago and maybe, maybe next year you can go to another place maybe in Sweden and then walk there for, for a few days. Uh, I, I'm not sure that uh, anyone will walk the whole route from, from Turku to Trondheim last, something like that. You can also go about, uh, travel by horse or yeah. along this route too. Similar, similar uh, project is Sankt Ola Waterway. In, in some kind of uh, to this fortnight project because also on, on water and, and about sailing. That was from short from Sotunga. Questions? Something to. Oh, on. Uh, the only uh, municipality on Norland Island that are participating in, in three three center Baltic uh, project and, and that's uh, rather funny also because we are the so as Heike said the smallest uh, municipality in Norland and in Finland 92 uh, inhabitants are now consulting yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> and. Uh, Thank you, Kenneth. Great presentation. Are there any questions in the audience to the speakers we had here today? If not, we are more, more or less closing this event. Stop the recording and uh, possibility who are here, not in the hill. <laughs> Simulated tour floor coming to Roma today. <laughs>